This is the Italian Citizenship Podcast, hosted by Marco Permunian and Rafael Di Furia. Hello there and welcome to another edition of the Italian Citizenship Podcast presented by ItalianCitizenshipAssistance.com for this special outdoor edition here in the hills of the Veneto, here in Northern Italy. We, of course, back here again with Italian attorney Marco Permunian. How are you doing, man? Good. How are you? Doing great, thanks. And of course, I'm Rafael Di Furia. And today, we wanted to talk about what's kind of going on right now. As many people are aware, uh, as of the beginning of this year, 2021, the UK is no longer a part of the European Union. So this has created a situation uh, for both Italian citizens as well as British citizens uh, that uh, may be less than ideal, unfortunately. And so we wanted to talk a little bit about what things are looking like at this moment in time. So Marco, I think maybe it might be worthwhile starting out with the situation for people who have a British passport, what do things look like for them in Italy right now as we're talking? I believe like most people are interested in, at least what I'm asked um, to, to answer, um, they're interested in what happens in terms of applying for citizenship through residency because as part of the EU, UK citizens are or were entitled, I should say, to Italian citizenship after four years of residency. So there are a lot of people that have resided in Italy for uh, four years and now they wonder, can I apply for citizenship through residency based on the fact that I've been in Italy for four years and based on the fact that I was a EU citizen during my, or d- during the majority of my stay in Italy. And unfortunately, if you have met the four years requirement now or after Brexit, so after uh, January 1st, you are no longer entitled to Italian citizenship based on the four years that you spent in Italy. You have to wait 10 years. That's very really? unfortunate. So you have to wait the the same time frame that other foreign nationals have to wait. Wow. So even if you were already registered as a resident of Italy. Exactly. Wow. It, if you were registered as a resident before Brexit, you can continue residing in Italy without... Um, particular limitations Mm -hmm. but in terms of citizenship you're going to have to wait on the other hand if you presented your citizenship application before brexit before december uh, of last year and if your application has already been present presented then you're fine you can just wait for your application to be processed in other words if you had met the four years requirement last year and if you presented your application last year, then you're good. But if you met, but even if you met the four years requirement last year, but you forgot to present your application, and, and you, real, you realize that, uh, you know, you, you you met the the four year requirements, and you want to present it now, even if you met it last year, unfortunately, you can't any mm-hmm. longer present your application for citizenship through residency. So basically, the clock is reset, start all over, and you're like everybody else who's not from the EU. Um, But what about maybe for somebody who's not already here, but somebody who wants to come to Italy? What does that look like right now? For the time being, unfortunately, UK citizens are treated as anybody else, like people from other foreign, from other non-EU countries. So uh, for the time being, there are no particular agreements between the UK and Italy. So if you are a UK citizen and want to relocate to Italy, you're going to have to look Mm -hmm. for a visa and unfortunately it's no longer as easy as it was Mm -hmm. when the UK was part of the EU uh, when you could just have relocated to Italy without any formalities just you know just relocate and start your life in Italy unfortunately Mm -hmm. that's the situation right now I guess that makes sense because something that came up in the news recently was that Italians who were going to the UK uh, because of things starting to open up uh, they were going for uh, interviews for work but because of Brexit they weren't just able to arrive because it's for the purposes of work and they didn't have the right visa to actually be there for a job interview so they were getting stopped and thrown into um into to uh, into holding and actually deported back to italy because of the situation that italians don't have the ability a special ability now to go to the uk they basically would have to come like anybody else so it makes sense 
that at least unfortunately it makes sense that uh, it works the other way around as well. But what else would maybe a person who's holding a British passport maybe need to be aware of at this moment in time uh, now that Brexit is something that is fully enacted? Well, for sure, um, there are a lot of UK citizens that are married to Italian citizens. In, in that situation, of course, uh, there is no problem because UK citizens, they can apply for citizenship through marriage as anybody else. Mm -hmm. After uh, three years from the marriage, if they are residing abroad, or two years if they are residing in Italy. So mm -hmm. if they have already met the two years um, requirement, say, you know, a couple of months ago, even if Brexit occurred, uh, that doesn't mm -hmm. change anything. If you in, if your intention is to apply for citizenship through marriage, you can st still start the process now. And actually, as we said in other videos, if you have minor children, that um, time frame is cut into half. So you can apply for citizenship through marriage after only one year mm -hmm. uh, if you have minor children and if you are residing in Italy or one and a half years if you are residing abroad. And so also these uh, British uh, nationals would have the ability, like anybody else, if they're married to an Italian citizen, to remain in Italy, even with a permesso di soggiorno, if I'm not mistaken. Exactly. Absolutely. And so I guess that really makes it something that's even more open. I mean, yes, of course, it's closed to the vast majority of people, but it's good to know <laughs> that there still is the recognition of how things work for everybody else, because in that aspect of um, the the, uh, the the spouse of the Italian citizen being able to be in Italy and remain in Italy, that's something that has been very open. Yes, there has been a little bit of closure in the past couple of years with some of the new restrictions like on language, the requirement there. But even then, it's still so much more open than many other countries because, I mean, Italy is one of the few countries in the world where only being married to a citizen is good enough to get the citizenship, whereas, I don't know, I, I want to say the vast majority of countries, maybe I'm wrong here, but I would at least assume that the vast majority of countries in the world would actually require, even if you are married, to live in absolutely. the country itself. That's that's. That's, that's absolutely true. Yes, for example, the U.S., they require that you reside in a country in order to be able to apply for U.S. citizenship based on marriage. And what about um, for citizenship by descent, jure sanguinis? What is the situation for a person who wants to come and apply uh, or make a petition for Italian citizenship here? Well, in that case, Brexit didn't really affect the process. It did affect the process to some extent, but not that much. So uh, before Brexit when the UK was part of the European Union, UK citizens could have gone to Italy, applied for, uh, apply for citizenship by descent, and they did not have to request a residency permit mm. to be able to reside in Italy when the application was pending. Mm -hmm. But now they do. So right now, uh, you are basically, you can be compared to an American who comes to Italy to do mm -hmm. the process. So when you, when you arrive in Italy, you have to make sure, first of all, that you didn't spend um, a lot of time in the Schengen area before, so you need to have time left for you to be able to stay in the Schengen area, and specifically in Italy in this case, to be able to initiate the process. Mm -hmm. And then once you initiate the process, you have to apply for a residency permit, um, which is the one that they give you while the process, the citizenship process is pending this permesso di soggiorno in attesa di cittadinanza. The one that nobody could say. <laughs> Um, but what about for working during that period of time while you're waiting? I know this is a rule that recently changed and we discussed it in, a, in an episode not too long ago. Maybe, uh, would you be okay to talk about that for a second? Absolutely. So recently the law changed and now you can convert your uh, permesso in a test cittadinanza into a work permit that allows you to work while you are waiting for your citizenship to be processed. It, it's kind of a longish process to convert. Mm -hmm. The permit so the sooner you start the conversion process the better so right after you got the residency permit um, but yeah that can be done now and it couldn't be done in the past so the, mm. the law changed recently i think we we did the episode just a couple of months ago yeah i think so but yeah that that can happen now that's good so at least they have the ability i mean because before that that change in the law uh, I mean, for Americans to come or anybody from the Italian diaspora from anywhere else in the world did have a little bit of a tricky situation with that. And 
that would have, at least in the past, have been a huge benefit of being a British national as part of the EU, was that you could come here, just plop down, start working. Um, but now, really, the, the system has opened up so that people do have a little bit more freedom because it, it really is unfortunate that, that a person wouldn't be able to support themselves while they're going through the process. It's kind of like, well, you can be here, but you can't do anything here. But now you can do something. And because we've talked about it just a little bit, citizenship through residency in this episode, um, and even though we've gone into great detail in other episodes that people can go and check out, uh, I think it may be worthwhile to just touch on that briefly and what somebody maybe should expect. So say some you're coming from London, wherever you're coming from in the UK, what would be the process for you to come to Italy and get citizenship by um, residency? Okay, first of all, if you are a UK citizen who presented the application for residency last year um, because you had met the 40 years requirement, you can expect your application to be processed in two to three years because it used to be up to four years for the Italian government to process your application, but with the most recent change, uh, now it's two to three years. Now, if instead you are someone who want to come now and eventually become a citizen, you would have, first of all, to get a visa, a residency permit, reside in Italy for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And by reside, I mean being registered with the Anagrafe because, make no mistake, if you just reside in Italy without being registered with the Anagrafe, that time doesn't count. So a lot of people realize that they have to register with the Anagrafe not immediately, but after some time. So that time that you spent in Italy without being registered with the Anagrafe doesn't really count. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> So it's important that you register with the Anagrafe immediately after you get your residency permit. And we talked about the uh, registration mm -hmm. um, as a resident extensively, pretty extensively in other episodes. Um, once you meet the, the 10 years requirement, you can start the application process. Actually, it's best if you take the language test, which is now required, uh, in advance, so before you even met the 10 years requirement, mm -hmm. requirement because it takes some time for you to go through the process of taking the test. It's not something that happens very quickly. You mm -hmm. have to uh, book a test in a location, then you have to attend uh, the test, like take the test in that specific location and then wait for the result to be released. And then you have to wait for the test certificate. Take three, four months to get the uh, certificate that proves that you have the B that you meet the B1 language uh, requirement. Mm -hmm. um, but then, once you meet the 10 years requirement, what you what you have to do is you have to gather these documents that are required for the application process. So mainly criminal background checks from your home country and other countries where you have resided in your birth certificate, the language test certificate. Everything needs to be translated and legalized, and then you submit your application on the website of the Italian consulate uh, I'm sorry Italian Ministry of Interior not the Italian consulate um, and then you wait uh, you can monitor the progress of your application on the same website mm -hmm. um, where you have to register you will be given a number starting with the letter K that you can use to monitor your application and then after the application has been processed which again can take up to two two three years um, you will be called in to take the oath and that's when you become formally an Italian citizen. Interesting. Very interesting. So I think that might be a great place to actually wrap this up. Uh, and of course, if, if you're interested in more to do with that subject, I highly recommend to check out the episodes where we focused in on that subject because we've gone into a lot of detail that now fortunately, unfortunately, probably unfortunately, I don't want to say fortunately, is now relevant to people also who are from the UK. Uh, so of course, if anybody is needing help with this process, how can they get in contact with you and your team? People can contact us through the italiancitizenshipassistance.com web website, through our Facebook page, or they can give us a call. The number is on the Facebook page or on the website. 
absolutely amazing, fantastic. And of course, if you're interested in more content like this, uh, be sure that you're subscribed to this YouTube channel for more content on Italian dual citizenship, as well as Italian real estate. And of course, also if you're interested in more about life in Italy, living in Italy, and living in Italy as an Italian dual citizen expat, be sure to come over to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Rafael Di Furia, where I talk about more of these subjects as well as show this beautiful country that we happen to be in and featuring in this very, very special edition of the Italian Citizenship Podcast. Of course, we have been here, as always, with Italian attorney Marco Permunian from ItalianCitizenshipAssistance.com. And I am Rafael Di Furia. Thank you so much for joining us again. Stay safe and stay healthy out there. Thank you. Later. <laughs>